Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Zachly. No news at all came out yesterday. It was super dry. The only thing people were talking about was the whole Pacers accusing the Lakers of tampering with Paul George. We already talked about that. There's nothing else to say. So we're going to be doing something different once again today. Today, what we're going to be taking a look at is players who I feel could make the all-star team for their first time in their career during this upcoming season. Let's go. Let's face it, alright, this is probably the most obvious one. Last year, Carl Anthony Towns got snubbed. Point blank, period, no and, ifs, or buts about it. You know, it's still kind of beyond me how DeAndre Jordan managed to get into the All-Star game over Carl Anthony Towns. No shots fired at DJ or anything, I mean, he's a really good center in the NBA. And I know coaches like to award players on winning teams with who they pick for All-Star Reserve. The Clippers were winning, the Wolves weren't, but it's like, come on! But there comes a point where a player is so good that it doesn't really matter if their team is winning or not, especially if it's a young team like the Wolves were. At that point, you kind of had to take Carl Anthony Towns because he is such a great player, don't you? I guess not. This year though, there is absolutely no possible way that Carl Anthony Towns will not suit up for the Western Conference during the All-Star game. He, of course, is going to be one of the best front court players, not just in the West, but the, but in the entire NBA. And on top of that, the Wolves will also be winning this year, so the coaches won't hold that against him. That's if he's not starting. Overall, there's just no reason for Carl Anthony Towns not to make it. I'm not even gonna lie, there are more players on the East for this list than there are for the West. That's because obviously it's going to be easier to make it in the east this year than it will be to make it in the west but after all the moves from this offseason there are a lot of holes to be filled in the eastern conference all-star team from last year and if Kyrie and Melo get traded to the west there could still be even more holes holes or not though Porzingis had to be a favorite to make it this year this is about to be a breakout year for Porzingis not a breakout year like he wasn't good in his first two years because he really was he was putting up 18 and 7 last year most of the time playing as their third option but assuming the Knicks move Melo he's about to be the number one option on the New York Knicks he's about to get a lot more touches and that means you can expect a huge scoring jump from Porzingis I can see him averaging around 25 points per game and if that's the case he is a for sure lock-in to make the all-star team not just next year but for many 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 years to come assuming he can stay healthy and play a decent amount of games before the All-Star break, I see no reason why Joel Embiid won't make the team. He almost, he would've started last year if not for the changes the NBA made where they allowed players in the media voting to kind of counteract the fan voting. The man was a social media wizard when it came to getting votes. If the NBA didn't introduce the new media and fan voting, he would've been starting the All-Star game. He finished third amongst all front court players in voting last year. Only second to LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And real quick, I look back at the numbers and I just want to say that I still can't believe Giannis got as many votes as he did. Not saying he didn't deserve them, but dang. 1.6 million votes for Giannis. So Giannis is definitely getting the respect he deserves out here. And that's great. People are woke. Anyways, though, like I was saying, if not for the media and the player voting, counteracting the fan voting, Joel Embiid would have been a starter in the All-Star game last year. And if he produces anything like he was producing in the limited minutes that he was playing last year and plays in actually a decent amount of games, I can for sure see him making his first all-star team possibly be even a starter Jabari Parker, this one depends on a whole lot of stuff going right. How and when he returns from his injury. In a recent interview, I think it was towards like the end of July, Parker said that he feels great and that he is not the average person who struggles with his injury, that he has already done stuff that is exciting, but he has also said that before he comes back, he wants to be able to jump higher and be faster than he was before and that he doesn't have a set date to return yet. You know, typically a torn ACL injury can take anywhere up to around a year to fully recover. He was injured back in February last year, right before the All-Star break, so he could be back by like December at the earliest or maybe even February. If he's back by February, there's no chance he'll make it, it'll just be too late. But if he does come back around December and he's playing at the level he was playing at last year, then he will make the team he was probably going to make the team over Carmelo Anthony last year like I said coaches like to award players that are on winning teams producing on winning teams Jabari Parker and Carmelo Anthony were putting up nearly identical stats 
half. However, the Bucks were winning and the Knicks weren't. So if he comes back and he starts killing again, Jabari Parker will make the All-Star team. But I wouldn't rush it if I were him. If he's not healthy till February, don't come back till February. Don't rush it. It's not worth it. Outside of Carl Anthony Towns, all of the young guys in the Western Conference are going to have a pretty difficult time making the All-Star team in the loaded Western Conference. But looking at last year's roster, if you have Carl Anthony Towns maybe replacing DeAndre Jordan, then I don't think it's too much of a stretch to think that Nikola Jokic could replace Marc Gasol. Once again, no knock on Marc Gasol, not saying he's a terrible player or anything, but the Nuggets will be better than the Grizzlies are next year, and that will be mainly completely thanks to to Nikola Jokic and on top of that I think Nikola Jokic is just about to have a tremendous season coaches are gonna see that they're gonna see he's leading this young Nuggets team to the playoffs in the Western Conference and they're going to give him the all-star nod over Marc Gasol if that happens in my mind he has got to be one of the most underrated young stars in the entire NBA no one gives him the credit he deserves and that includes me I'm not gonna sit up here in front like I be talking about Bradley Beal and how good he is I don't and as I was making this video I realized that and I just want to say that I am sorry to all the Bradley Beal fans out there for not giving this man the respect he deserves whenever I talked about the Wizards and the season they had last year the first thing I was to mention was John Wall it's because of John Wall that the Wizards were so good and it but it was also because of Bradley Beal. The man was freaking flames. And he had a shot at making the all-star team last year. 23 points per game, 48% shooting from the field, and 40% shooting from three. That is the definition of flames for a shooting guard in the NBA. And on top of that, the man isn't even in his prime yet. He's only 24 years old. So he still has about three more years before he starts to reach his peak. So that means he's gonna be coming back better and better and better every single year and if that's the case even though the guard situation in the east isn't too bad it's gonna be kind of tough i think bradley beal has a shot at making it either gobert or Jokic. i can't see both of them making it but at the same time i can't see both of them missing it either the jazz are still gonna be a threat to make the playoffs in the western conference this season and that's mainly largely thanks to rudy gobert the dude's a beast easily a top five maybe even easily a top three defender in the NBA, averaged 14 points, 13 rebounds, and two and a half blocks per game. And I know some of you are already saying that it just sounds like he's another DeAndre Jordan. Rebounds and blocks, that's what he specializes in. But that's not even close to being true. Those were just his averages. Rudy Gobert was getting better and better and better. You could see him getting better as the season was progressing. And honestly, I know this might sound crazy, but if I had to describe Rudy Gobert to someone, I would say Take Kawhi Leonard, make him a center, and you have Rudy Gobert. And that's because they both share the same work ethic. I mean, Rudy Gobert and Kawhi Leonard both come back significantly better every single year. When Rudy Gobert first came into the league, he wasn't seen as being as good as he was today. People didn't think he would be this good. He was seen more of as a project. Didn't play much at all his rookie year. During the offseason, though, he worked and worked and worked and came back in the second year. He was already one of the best rim protectors in the NBA. So he was a good defender and a good rebounder, but didn't have much of an offense of games kind of sounds like Kawhi Leonard am I right however this year he made pretty big strides in his offense to begin the season it wasn't anything special but as the season went on you could literally see this man getting better and better and better on the offensive end while he was still killing it on the defensive end too like I said he averaged 14 points for the season which doesn't sound so great but during the second half of the season he was averaging 17 points per game and now with Hayward out of the picture in Utah the Jazz are gonna need someone else to step up on the offensive end and I think that could be Rudy Gobert I wouldn't be surprised if he averages around 20 points 13 rebounds and three blocks per game next year and keep in mind Dwight Howard was an MVP candidate back in the day with nearly the same stats keep an eye out for Rudy Gobert this year but that's it. Those are the players who I think have the best chance of making their first All-Star game this year. What do you guys think? Let me know what players you think will make the All-Star team for the first time this upcoming season down in the comment section below. But now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. And yesterday, after this whole Lakers Pacers thing came out, I asked you guys if you think the Lakers will be found guilty of tampering with Paul George. And here is what you said. Question of the day. Lakers will not be found guilty. Pacers are just salty that all they got for George was all 
Home Depot and Sabonis. Question of the day. If you think the NBA is going to punish their favorite team, the Lakers, then you're drunk. Question of the day. I don't think the Lakers are going to be found guilty of tampering. In the end, it just sounds like they don't got no evidence and are happy they lost PG-13 for a package of nothing. I can't see them being found guilty either. To me, Indiana just seems like that crazy ex who tries to ruin your next relationship. Like if they can't have him, then the person that wants him can't have him either. They're trying to sabotage this whole Paul George to the Lakers in 2018 thing. But that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and until tomorrow, keep getting the bug, Steam STC, and I'm out of here.